Hi and welcome to another trick lesson. Okay, this time we're doing one of my favorite topics and that is 2 and 3D trigonometric applications. Now before we can actually get to the fun problems, what we are first going to have to do is uh, lay some groundwork to make it easy to understand the rest of what is coming. First of all, uh, let's just have a little bit uh, better way of referring to the sides and the angles in a triangle okay so here's just a random triangle and we're going to call it triangle a b c which means that this vertex is called vertex a that's vertex b and that is vertex c and, and now it, it's simple to understand that if i were to talk about this angle here i'll talk about angle a Okay, so that would be angle A. So you see this little sign on top in Afrikaans, we call it a cuppy, that little cuppy at the top there. And here we have angle C, and then that would be angle B. Okay, so when we refer to an angle, we talk about the vertex letter with that strange sign on the top there. Okay, now if I talk about this side, this is going to be side B, side C, and side A. Notice how I'm using lowercase letters here while I had uppercase letters at the verte uh, vertices. And why is this lowercase B? Well, it is because that is the side that is opposite B, okay, opposite angle capital uh, B and this is the side that is opposite angle capital C so I call it lowercase c and this is the side that is opposite angle capital A and therefore I call it lowercase a I think that is fairly simple so that if I say that then you know oh okay we're referring to angle uh, side length B because it's lowercase and that's the side that is opposite angle B good that's one of the things I wanted to start with the, so if we were to go back to some of the work that we've done so far so far we've been talking about sine cos and tan that is, uh, those are the the three foundational trigonometric ratios so we have sine of theta now let's use our uh, naming system here anyway you like to have a B and C around here okay so there's a b and c the three vertices then this uh, let me make my c look capital okay there, that's better so this would be lowercase c that because it's opposite this would be lowercase a and that would be lowercase b now for sine we are going to have to talk about, instead of talking about sine theta i'm going to have to talk about uh, just wipe that out. In to instead of talking about sine theta, I have to refer to one of these angles. Okay. Now we never refer to the 90 degree angle here. Our observed angles would either be this angle here or that angle there. So we would either talk about sine of B. Okay. Now sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it would be capital B over C. Okay. So uh, sorry. It would be B over C, sorry, not capital B over what, what. Okay, B over C. That would be sine of beta. So, cos of, not beta, cos of angle B is equal to, so cos is adjacent in this case, it's it's coincidental, please. Okay, that it's, that adjacent is called A over C. And tan, the last one, if we have tan of angle B, okay, that would be opposite over adjacent, which in this case we are referring to B over A. I hope that made sense to you, but almost the most important thing from that I want you to get from this is that sine, cos, and tan can only, is always an only, always and only used on right triangles okay right triangles that's the only time we're allowed to use sine cos and tan in this way okay which means um, one of 
my vertices must be associated with a 90 degree angle in this case it's vertex C it must be a 90 degree angle if it's not then I can't use this well I can but not in this simple way now how can I use it well let me draw any triangle for you here okay so there I have another random triangle and one thing that you'll notice if I'm going to call this triangle A, B, C again, it doesn't matter where you start your numbering or your naming of the vertices. But um, in, in this way, just look how the way I drew it was to place one of the sides as a horizontal line. Okay, it doesn't matter how you draw, just so that one of the sides are horizontal. And then what I'm going to do is from here, you can see none of these vertices are associated. That's not a 90 degree angle. We well, not, we're not assuming it is, okay? So the, these are three um, whatever sized angles, okay? We don't know what they are necessarily, but look what happens if I drop a vertical line here. In other words, a line that represents the perpendicular height. That's the perpendicular height. In other words, how high is A above this horizontal line? Now what we have is we've broken up, and uh, let's call this point D where it lands. Where that, so if I drop a, a stone from here where it lands, we're going to call that point D. Okay. Notice how I've broken up my triangle A, B, C into two right-angled triangles. Okay. So now I have the triangle A, B, C is equal to triangle A, D, C plus triangle ADB ADB okay so for example let's do it a little bit in color there's my triangle ADB triangle ADB and if I add to that triangle triangle ACD if I place those two next to each other like that triangle a c d the order here when we talk about a triangle is not important but notice how when i add those two triangles together i get my original one okay makes sense so any triangle can be broken up into two right angled triangles so then we can use sine cos and tan in that way okay sine cos and tan can be used on these two triangles and we are going to look in the next couple of videos on how to do that let me just draw you another type of triangle okay here you you notice that that my highest point point a lies in between b and c so what if it didn't what if it stretched a little bit beyond so let's look at another scenario where here's my my side there's a now you can see it leans over C it's going past C so that now when I drop my my stone from that height and it reaches this level point D does not align between B and C okay there's my point D I wonder if you can still see the two right angled triangles that we are going to work with okay well maybe you can pause the video see if you can see it but the two right angle triangles are still the two same triangles. Okay, it's still triangle A, D, B. Do you see there's a big triangle? Okay, so we've got triangle A, D, B. And then we have another triangle here. Triangle, uh, remember that's the 90 degrees. So we have triangle A, C, D. Okay, that's a smaller triangle triangle a c d but the actual triangle that we are working with is this triangle in blue here that triangle over there that's triangle a b c so what is the relationship between this triangle and these two triangles well as you can see triangle a b c is smaller than the pink triangle this pink triangle so we have the pink triangle but then we subtract this green portion here okay to get so if we have the pink and we subtract 
I can try and color the pink as well. Okay, if we have the pink triangle, which is this massive triangle, and we subtract the green triangle, we get the blue triangle. And that's it. Okay, so again, we've broken up this mm, arbitrary triangle, the blue one, in to uh, the relationship between right two right angled triangles and again each of the sides here can now be represented in terms of sine cos and tan now that exact representation is going to be in two well, actually three formulas we are going to look at the sine rule the sine rule the cosine rule and the area rule okay the area rule and these three rules are going to help us calculate the side lengths and the relationship between side lengths in a triangle that is not a right angled triangle by breaking it up into two triangles that are right angled triangles well i'll see you in the next, uh, I'll see you in the next couple of videos where we're going to do exactly that see you